Hey, good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, May 12th, and Tuesday means modern. And there's a handful of decks in today's dump that I want to highlight. Uh, some cool stuff in here. Um, 58 decks in today's dump. Uh, about average for what we've been seeing from modern lately. 42 of them with companions, and that's about 72%. And that's the highest percentage we've seen out of a modern leak deck dump to date so the percentage of companion use seems to be going up both in depth we're seeing it increasing in the winners metagame and in breadth where we're seeing it in the leagues um, so that's definitely developments to watch um, of course the orion or sorry Luris was the big uh Winner with 23 decks. Yorion right behind with 11. We did have three Obosh today, and that's that's kind of a cool thing. But uh, I wanted to highlight a handful of decks here. Ak S had a good. Uh, it's the Sakarda's Aid Colossus Hammer uh, combo deck. Uh, with Loris as the companion, I think it's it's a fun. I I don't think it's anything more than kind of a meme deck. I don't think you're going to see any major results with it, but when it does its thing, um, it's pretty hilarious. And the idea of Ink Moth Nexus carrying a Colossus Hammer just kind of cracks me up. So at that, that's one I wanted to point out. Uh, another one is from Marshmalovsky. Right down here a little bit. Um, so this is a deck that I've been watching. I think this is the third league dump in a row it's appeared. This is a Garuda. Um, it's a Garuda companion deck, but it's not clone tribal. This one uses primetime. It's got Kozilek, Jin Gitaxius, um, basically a torrential gear hook all your all your uh, even CMC nasty creatures platinum Imperion is another big one here um, the thing that kind of makes this tick and why torrential gear hook is in the deck is aether mages touch um, reveal the top four cards of your library put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield and it gains at the beginning of an end step return it to its owner's hand and so that's in blue white that's a way to cheat out creatures which is a very interesting thing um and used to great effect in this deck especially when it goes back to your hand uh, you might be able to cast it again so yeah uh something to watch here this this is an interesting little deck that's on the fringes right now, but we'll see where it ends up going. Gray MS, where'd he go? Here we go. Um, I just wanted to highlight this one. Yes, it's a Bogles deck. Um, I'm fine with Bogles. I, I don't have a problem with Hexproof like a lot of people do. Uh, yes, it's an annoyance to play against, but, you know, a lot of decks are. Um, this one I wanted to point out because it's Bant. And it's running four Force of Negations. Even a Serum Visions in a Bogles deck just strikes me as odd. But it's this is more on the Curious Obsession Staggering Insight path, where it's uh, you know it's it's just a Bant version of the deck, and definitely a, a tweak that has been showing up uh, much more lately. And I think as a result, kind of a staggering insight kind of uh, coming to the fore. And then Loris, of course, makes Bogle's decks a little bit more resilient. Uh, Retro Gaming 86 had an interesting little brew here. Uh, this is an Obosh deck. I wanted to highlight this one because it is using the Planebound Accomplice Luka Immercool combo. And the idea here is you're trying to get. Uh, extra mana with your utopia sprawls and your arbor elf so in theory you could even as early as turn two play plane bound accomplice 
spend a red to put a Luka into play, minus to it, sacrifice the plane bound accomplice, get Immacool. It could be done on turn two if you get your Arbor Elf Utopia Sprawl opening. Um, that's just nutty. Uh, just, just nutty. And, uh, of course, the Immacool stays in play with Luca's Polymorph effect. So, yeah. Uh, a little combo to watch out for there. Uh, I want to say it was Andrea Mangucci, but it could have been somebody else posted a uh, a link or posted a screenshot of his opponent doing this on turn three, except he had a uh, Ice Fang Coatl in hand with the ability to give it Death Touch, and Immercool doesn't do so well with Death Touching blockers. Uh, Mana Symbol friend of the dive down podcast and uh streamer brewer uh this is an interesting winota deck uh yorion at the helm and it's doing the agent of treachery stuff here but um we've got a bunch of different uh it's humans in many ways, humans that create non-human tokens, I think. There's some of that in here. We've got Blade Splicer and things like that. So they kind of feed themselves. Season Pyromancer creates elementals. Um, and then Eldritch Evolution to try to get bigger stuff into play. And I think you're just trying to work your way up to Agent of Treachery and start stealing their things. PNLR makes Thopters. So I've got a uh, Grumgully... EDH deck, uh, and Grumgully, if you remember, gives plus one, plus one counters to non-human creatures when they enter the battlefield, and it's a human tribal deck, but all the humans in the deck create non-human tokens, so they're tokens that come in and get the counters. This is a similar idea here, and then he's doing the classification uh, little... Uh, cuteness here to try to make things big so yeah interesting little deck uh don't know if it'll go any further than this but i bet you his stream was pretty fun to watch armstrong 36 has an interesting build here this is a an elementals deck with um just guy sahili the the sahili combo in it but the rest of the deck is elemental focused uh, with Muldrifters and Omnath and Risen Reef and Unsettled Mariner and Voice of Resurgence. Uh, and then a little bit of your evolution and Eladomri's call to uh, focus on the combo a little bit. But I thought this was an interesting tweak of two different archetypes here where you've got basically what is Jeskai Sahili. And I think this is four color. I don't think there's any black in this. Um, so then you've got a four color elementals deck on top of it. And I, I just found that to be a very interesting merging of two archetypes. And the last one I want to look at is from Pygonti. Uh, right here, this is... So... I just wanted to call this out. This is a Yorion deck, but it's also got Lurus in the sideboard and two Lurus's main. I don't think it's ever able to use Lurus as a companion, but it's interesting to have them in the main to help, especially with some of the, um, you know, the synergy between. Lurus and Mishra's Bobble is well known and, and a, kind of the scourge of modern right now uh, and to some extent legacy but uh, having these two working together I found a very interesting combo um, most of the decks you would expect to find in a modern list were here I didn't really see any uh, bizarre things pop out uh, the, you know, we had our top of the metagame stuff all represented. Um, and then, you know, things like Infect and 5-Color Niv and 
and all those other decks uh, hanging around pretty much showed up in this list. Uh, but these were the ones that I found the most interesting. I thought you guys might want to take a look. Uh, thanks for hanging out today. Do appreciate it. And we will uh, be back tomorrow with a look at the metagame. Uh, still given the way the format is shaping out, formats period are shaping out, I am going to be focusing on modern, uh, sorry, focusing on companions. And especially with the announcement that there will be ban and restrict announcements next week for Vintage and Legacy, um, you know, maybe take a look at those formats and see what might be on the block. I think we all have a pretty good idea, given what we've been seeing over the last few weeks, but never hurts to take a second, second glance at things. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, do please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and so that you know when my next video is coming out. And that's about it for today, and we will talk to you tomorrow. Stay safe. Have fun. Bye-bye.